another class, fish ID. Even got my vest on. Fish vest on this. And uh, yeah, I love fishing. Uh, always have, always will. And my dad, thanks to him, he introduced me to fishing as a young child. So I'm going to go over a whole bunch of species, uh, some, some great information about, about them. Uh, these species are all based in Ontario, um, Canada. And um, yeah, okay. So lovely brook trout I'm holding up there. Look at that. Actually, that was spring. The There's still snow in the back. We know that's a rock. Never mind. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let, let's go over the anatomy of the fish first. There's soft ray fish, spiny ray fish. Okay. So there's a difference. So you look at the salmonoids, like the trout, the salmon, um, they're the soft ray fish. And we're going to go over the fins. There's a whole bunch of other things, but the parts of the fish, whatever. But the, the fins are important. I think there's five fins. We'll start off, first of all, with the dorsal fin. The old uh, shark thing. The dorsal fin comes through the water. And then um, you have the adipose fin. Only the soft ray fish, the trout, the salmon, and the white fish, is part of the same thing, believe it or not, um, has the adipose fin, OK? Uh, Fish like the spiny ray fish, like, like bass, uh, walleye, they do not have that. You also have the tail fin, which is not called the tail fin. It's actually called the caudal fin. Uh, you, know, you know what? I don't know why it's called, called the caudal fin, but I do know that where you grab a fish when you're doing studies on them, you don't want to injure them. Or even when you're catching them and catching and releasing, one of the best places to grab one, uh, especially a salmonoid, is the caudal peduncle. Say that five times fast. <laughs> So you got the caudal fin, caudal peduncle, caudal peduncle, caudal peduncle, caudal peduncle, caudal peduncle. And then you've got the anal fin, and all my students giggle when they, they, they never get that one wrong on the test. The reason why it's called the anal fin is because the fin is near the anus. And then they start giggling and there's the anus. And anyway, then I, I wait for a while and then I continue on. All right, uh, you guys are probably laughing right now. <laughs> then you got the pelvic fin, uh, pelvis alvis. That's how I remember that. And um, then you got the pectoral fin, and I remember that by the pecs. It's right by the pecs. And yes, what, what else we got? Yeah, we got them all, right? Yes, yes. Dorsal, adipose, caudal, anal, pelvic, pectoral. All the fins. Okay. So when you look at spiny ray uh, fish, which is a bass, this is a large mouth bass, uh, you have a totally different dorsal. Um, look it's got basically it's got the, the spines on okay and those spines are for for uh, predators that are grabbing it and they'll bite into it and then they'll get that what you've got when you when, oh i'm not talking very well today i need another cup of tea um the spiny rays on it when the predator grabs it it pierces it and then they're like oh I'm, and they they swim away oh maybe maybe not i don't know i've seen pike just swallow a sunfish hole and i'll worry about it but all right, but they have spines. That's why they're called the spiny ray fish. So you got the same thing. You've got the uh, dorsal fin, caudal fin, caudal peduncle, anal fin, pelvic, and pectoral. Okay. All right, inside of a fish, this black stuff that you see in there, that's the kidney. And when you're filling a fish, get your thumb and run it down there and get rid of that. You don't wanna, you don't wanna um, cook that up. And then you got swim bladder, which actually makes it float. You got the intestines, and it's really good to open those intestines and see what they're eating and match the hatch. And that, that's, a, that's a good way to do that. It's kind of fun too. Um, stomach, same thing. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> no, cut the stomach out and then look what, what they're eating. Not the intestine. I mean, that's, it's all turned into a poop by then. So yes, check the stomach, not the intestine. Oh boy. All right, liver and heart. There's the heart right there. Little tiny black thing you see when you open up the fish and then Big, big, huge liver, okay? All right, let's get into the fish species. Uh, we, the first one is a rainbow trout, a steelhead, and this is an introduced species to Ontario. Uh, what was the year that was introduced? I forget, probably the well, 1800s, I guess, but it was uh, introduced. I do know that the government started introducing them and stocking them and raising them in, in uh, captivity more than brook trout. Brook trout are really finicky fish. I'll get into those, those guys in a minute. But um, the rainbow trout, all trout need high levels of oxygen, okay? And where you find high levels of oxygen in the water is deep down cold water. Cold water holds more oxygen or running water uh, current, which actually creates oxygen, okay? So, um, and if you have a, a trout stream in Southern Ontario that's in, in a farming area and 
it's devoid of uh, trees along the shoreline, well, then the sunlight is going to warm that water up, less oxygen, and the trout weren't doing very well. So, I mean, it, it's somewhat cold, so they would put rainbow trout in, and they're less finicky uh, because people still want to fish for trout. Uh, that's why they would put in rainbow instead of a uh, brook trout. And it was a, it was a put and take too. I mean, they would put them in knowing that people would catch them, and that would put less stress off the, the native brook trout, to be quite honest. Yeah, so that's why the problem. And also, people just want to fish for rainbow, especially the uh, in Lake Ontario. Uh, the rainbow, you know, in, uh, rainbow will actually need a stream to, to spawn in and a large body of water to live their mature life okay so and they actually spawn in the spring whereas most salmon actually spawn, spawn in the fall so um yeah so the, the they come up the streams in the springtime and go back to lake ontario or if you're actually in the interior um they do need a stream to spawn a lot of stock rainbow don't spawn they're just put and take right so um anyway i'm blabbing this one in particular i'll show you here this is incredible so this rarely has happened in Canada but in some areas I think there's six seven or, or eight places but um, in Ontario there's a specific place where this happened where rainbow trout were stocked and they self-sustained meaning those stock fish actually did what they're supposed to do they go up the streams and, and spawn and then they go back and uh, back I think it was back in the 60s in Algoma which is actually uh, between uh, Sault Ste. Marie Sault Ste. Marie and Sudbury Algoma region there's a place called Kirkpatrick Lake and in Kirkpatrick Lake, which is the Blue Lake area, um, and uh, damn, that's near. Anyway, I, you have to fly into this place. There's a fishing lodge there. It's an amazing place. Uh, they self-sustain, and you can go there and catch these uh, amazing rainbow trout like that. That's cool that they did that. Well, finally caught a beautiful rainbow. Um, there were some lines getting crossed over and a little bit of panic going on and he fought hard for a little while he was under the canoe. It's a great bit of country here I'm telling you. Blue lakes, mountainous country and no one. What am I missing about rainbow? Uh, oh yeah they got the rainbow. <laughs> Let me see if I got yeah they got the rainbow. Now the ones that are in turbid water uh, in the rivers they have more of the rainbow than they would in a lake. Not sure why, but I do know they're more prominent to have one in the streams. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They have black dots in their gills and stuff like that. But the prominent thing is that that rainbow along the side. That's why they're called rainbow trout. Oh, and they're actually nicknames. Not nickname. The other name is steelhead uh, because they have a steel, steel, steel gray top of the head like that. Okay. Brookies, brook trout, speckled trout, square tails. Uh, yeah, love them. My favorite fish. I always think that uh, you're a true angler if you can catch a brook trout because they're not easy to catch. Anybody can catch bass. Just saying. Why I like brook trout fishing, uh, why I like trout fishing, it's not easy. To actually catch, we've caught 11 fish so far in our boat in three days and that's one of our best years in Algonquin. That's fantastic. You got another one? Yeah. Cool. Oh, like trout? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. And uh, why I love that is they're not easy to catch. It's a challenge. It's something I've been doing since I was eight years old. My dad always brought me out uh, trout fishing. And yeah, I love bass fishing, love walleye fishing, love catching pike, but not that it's easy, but it, it's not that difficult. To go into a place and catch brook trout and lake trout, why I really even more so like brook trout is they're very sensitive fish uh, to the environment. If something's messing with the environment, th these trout aren't gonna be here anymore. So that's an indicator that this environment is doing really well because we're catching lots of them and releasing lots of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and people think we're crazy. The bugs are insane. Uh, it's bad weather. It's cold right now. It's it was hot yesterday. Portages are brutal. Um, so why do it? I love it. Absolutely love it. And to catch a brook trout, you're an angler. Catch a bass, you're just some, someone going fishing. Okay, we're uh, we portaging to Red Rock. And Ash, would you say it's buggy? Huh? <laughs> oh, it's brutal. Oh. I've never run through a trail before. But yeah. That was brutal. Skills are really, really hey, it's bad. It's nice and calm, else. It's yeah, we had, we started off in a storm, and now we're at Red Rock and it's calm. And that's why the bugs are bad. Yeah. Oh my God! Look at them all around you. God. Well, look at that. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. There's gazillions of them. Yeah, zillions. No, I think can't even. We got to get out here. You can't even think. Right? Oh, we got to get out of here. You can't even think about it. So Brook Joe are native to uh, Ontario. Algonquin Park, Goma, um, Lake Superior area, uh, just uh, ama amazing 
for trout fisheries in, 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 uh, in Ontario and love fly fishing for them. Okay, so they're different than the rainbow trout. They have better fish than that. There we go. We actually have um, this, what, what's that name of that? It's basically like a tiger look on the top. That's for camouflage. So when a, an aerial predator, like an osprey is flying over, they don't see them. There is a name of that though. Um, oh yeah, vermiculations. Aha, I knew there was a fancy name for that. So they have a rainbow, uh, a rainbow. Oh, I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm doing terrible today. Um, getting cooped up a little inside. I'm not sure about you guys, but oh, just walking around the block doesn't do, do it for me, to be quite honest. But we got to do what we got to do, right? All right. I'm getting off of that, that topic. They have red spots with blue halos. Okay. So that's why they're called speckled trout. The reason why some people call them brook trout is because they're in brooks they're they're in, in, in streams uh whereas lake trout they're only in lakes so you can get a brook trout in a lake and a stream or both okay they can live in both what'd you get what'd you get brook trout yeah. way nice. to go keith yeah what did he catch it all uh, no don't tell anybody don't don't show him the lure uh what did you get kev speckled trout first cast oh, nipazing river first cast back. yeah Look at that. That's how to put a smile on his face. It is. I love huh? this river. Wow. So, um, there we go. The other thing is that they have a squarer tail than what you want to see next is, is the lake trout. A huge difference between the lake trout and the brook trout is this tail. That's why a lot of people call them square tails. The other is this bar, white bar. That's a giveaway. As soon as you see that bar, especially I see in some stocked uh, specs, um, even winter, winter uh, going, going uh, winter ice fishing, uh, they, 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 they kind of look like a lake trout, but they, they, they have the square tail and then they have the white bar. Uh, oh yeah, the, the belly is really quite red, especially uh, in a spawning male. All right. There's a good picture of a brookie right there. So see the halos along the side and see this, see those white bars? That's the giveaway and the square tail. That is, what lake is that? What lake is that? That's in Algonquin. I forget what lake that was. I wouldn't tell you anyway. <laughs> That's McCaskill Lake actually, uh, that, that brookie was caught in. And it was full of um, uh, uh, gill lice, I think they're called. Uh, it's it, what, what that's not good when that happens water is getting warm or some of that but so we had it for dinner instead of letting it go it wasn't going to do well anyway so uh square tail bars good size brookie so lake trout brook trout so see the difference lake trout have a fork tail brook trout have a squarish tail you want to tell us what you've caught a lake trout is good enough to eat for dinner Ooh, look at that. Not too big, but not too small. Just yes. perfect for, for us. Yeah. We're going to cook them up with some lemon. Dalton caught a clam. Yeah, he did. Right in the middle of the lake. But lake trout do not have the, the, the spots, the halos, okay? It is blotchy, rectangular, white marks, all right? And they're only found in lakes, whereas brook trout, again, you can get them in both the stream and, 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 a, and a lake. So see, there's the tail of the brookie on the campfire, mm, yum, yum, fires here. And then that's the lake trout. So see the fork tail? Okay. So here's how to catch the lake trout. So here's the thing, that they love auction. They need auction, and where's auction in a lake? Is in cold water. Cold water in the summertime drops. You know? So the warm water's on the top, cold water's on the bottom. So they go down deep. So you can fish all day in the summertime on the surface. You're not gonna catch a lake trout. Okay, you're not going to catch a brook trout either if they're in the lake. They're going to be down the bottom, so you got to find them. Uh, use lead core or um, steel line or jig, whatever. But you got to get down at least thirty feet. He fought really well. Yeah, he's a good size though, Kev. Okay? Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> Dalton and Mike just gave up, so it's like they're right at this point. We're we're winning right now. You guys are not doing very well. I thought we had to rescue a lake trout that Kevin just caught, um, but we think he's okay. Was he okay? Yeah, no, he, he burned it off. Yep. I okay. Just should have plunged him in like that. Okay. We. This is an amazing trip. We just hooked onto another lake trout, and uh, actually, this rod that we're using is was Kevin's dad's, 
and it's a bamboo rod and we were down at least what 50 feet maybe yeah. 30 feet so we're getting them on the top or we're getting them on the bottom oh this is the best size one yet oh, oh. with lead don't lose that <laughs> don't lose oh with lead core it's doing that yeah. in the springtime you can actually drill anywhere uh, because the water is flipping uh, that's what happens in the springtime so yeah there's cold water on the top and it's flipping around so they're going to be mostly on the top uh, but they will be scattered as well in in, in cold spots also sporadic and yeah they're easier to catch in the springtime because you can use a regular fishing rod and just fish um you know six feet down and you can catch a lake trout if you catch a lake trout or even brookie with uh pink meat they're eating more invertebrates than, uh, than if they actually are a whitish flesh. If they're eating white flesh, they're eating a lot more minnows, a lot more ciscos, for example, in, in Algonquin Park. They're a lot, they're, if they're white, they're more fatty. Um, so yeah, they're just still gonna be tasty. I think the red meat is a lot more tastier, to be quite honest. Uh, and invertebrates are insects on the bottom of, of in, in the mud, okay? During their life cycle. Lake trip. Splake. Dad caught a fish, I was bringing it up to you to fillet it. What? No, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, that's a splake. Do you know what a splake is? So, uh, Mike caught this. It's a splake. It's a hybrid between a brook trout and a lake trout. So if you look at the, the bottom fins, they've got the, uh, the patroller fin, the anal fin, and the pelvic fin. Uh, they have white bars on them. That's a key characteristic of a brookie. Uh, it's got the speckles on it, relatively like a brook trout, they're not as vibrant, but it has a forked tail, which is a lake trout. Uh, a brook trout has a square tail, like they, they're called square tails. So, there you go. Splake, for lunch. Hallelujah, brothers, sisters, say it again. So you're probably asking why Splake? Uh, well, it's a put in take fishery. So it's to take the pressure, fishing pressure off the natural brook trout or natural lake trout, uh, for example, in Nuna County. So people can come here and catch the, the splake that are put in take. They, in theory, do not breed in, 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 uh, in the lakes. Um, there is some talk about them actually do now, but uh, that's just hearsay, uh, in, a, in hypothesis. So it's to create a species for anglers to fish for, to take the pressure off other natural or native species. There you go. And they taste good. Well, what do you think about um, eating splake? It's hybridized, and we, you know, are we playing God? We're there already. We're there already. As I was saying, we 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 vegetable you eat is hybridized corn, chicken, chicken. How many days from it when it hatches to when you eat it? Something crazy like twenty days or something. You have to fact check me on that, but it's 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 it's, it's, it's all. We started playing God a long time ago. It's like perfectly long. It is pretty good, eh? Eats peanut butter, doesn't it? This is an Ashton Halbert Highlands red pine. Red pine? No, it wasn't. Was it red? No, I forget the name. I forget the lake, but it's a spike. Brown trout. These uh, were introduced in North America from Europe uh, in 1883, a long time ago. People here that came from Europe just wanted to catch them. And they also, like the rainbow, are less finicky to um, streams warming up, so in the south. So a lot of the, the, the streams in southern Ontario, including, I think, the Credit, uh, but Grand River, other tributaries, um, even some around here just south of, of, of uh, Conquin. I live um, uh, in Bridge North and actually just, what is it? What river is it? The, uh, oh my lord, Kevin, you're doing so poorly today. Oh yes, Eels, Eels Creek. They actually introduced uh, brown trout to Eels Creek. I'm not sure if they're doing well, but the brook trout weren't doing well, so they put brown trout in there. Oh yeah, how to identify brown trout. It has halos as well, but it's a red dot surrounded by either a black halo or oblique, um, like see-throughs uh, spot, black spots along the back. They can't get confused with the uh, the Atlantic salmon. Uh, Atlantic salmon do not have these dots and they're not golden um, color they have this golden hue to them but in the water ew, some people get them messed up and you actually can't keep an Atlantic salmon uh, they're being reintroduced right now and I, I think so I don't think you can keep, keep them so 
you got to know your species. So you can't say to the conservation officer, I did not know this was not a brown shark. It's like Steve Martin's, Steve Martin's joke. I did not know arm robbery was illegal. He told me I would never have done it. <laughs> anyway, brown shark introduced, brown glow, red dots, square tail. I'm going to go over the salmons. There's three salmons uh, that are in Lake Ontario. And um, uh, some students get confused with all these. I'm going to really make it simplified. I can tell you a whole bunch of details about the salmon, but I'm just going to make it really simple for you. The Atlantic salmon, speckles on the back, but speckles on the cheek as well. Okay. And no black gums. And that, that'll mean something when we get to the other uh, salmons. Okay. So some black dots on the back, but got cheeks, black speckles on the cheeks. Okay. The Atlantic salmon are from the Atlantic Ocean. And basically they would go from the ocean up a river and they need the river and they actually can switch you know, from salt water to fresh water through their gills. It's really kind of cool. I can go on in great detail about that, but it's really neat. They can do that. And then uh, they go and breed and then they come back. Now they don't die. Uh, Atlantic salmon don't die when they, they breed like some other salmon. So, but they do need a stream. So the Lake Ontario salmon, Atlantic salmon, which are now extirpated, meaning that they're not an endangered species. They're actually just endangered in this region uh, of, of Lake Ontario. They used to be there during or just after the Ice Age. So they got landlocked through the Ice Age and they evolved to actually not needing the, the fresh water or the salt water. So they used the streams to breed, went back to the lake. And then because all the settlers came, uh, 17, 1800s, whatever, 18, 1800s, they actually started damming the, the streams coming into Lake Ontario for mills and things like that. And the salmon needed that to breed, so they weren't doing well. And this guy named Wilmot, Wilmot Creek, I'm not sure if you know about that, near Oshawa, and he actually said, hey, we gotta do something. So he started raising them, and then he started putting them out, out other, in other places of the world uh, just to make sure they don't become completely extinct. So that strain of salmon is still around. So here's the cool thing. The college I teach at, a few years back, they said, hey, you know, uh, we've got other salmon in Lake Ontario, but they were introduced from the Pacific Ocean, or the Pacific Ocean, um, but we actually want, want the Atlantic salmon that were originally here. So they went to the Atlantic Ocean and they caught them legally, uh, got a permit for it, and they went to raise them and they raised them and then they let them go and it didn't do so well. And they're like, hmm, what's going on? Well, the salmon they were introducing were actually salmon that went from the ocean to uh, fresh water. Well, Lake, Lake Ontario is all fresh water. So probably that's why they weren't doing so well. So they're like, hmm, now how do we actually then get strain that used to be here? Well, they went to the Aleutian Islands where some were introduced back by the, in the day by Wilmot and a bunch of other people and they caught them and it did okay. And then they even got um, uh, one of the fish mounts from Museum of Nature and they took a DNA analysis off the, uh, the, the scale. And now they're actually mixing all that all up. And I can go on and on about this, but it's a great project. And now they're doing well. So the, the students actually raise these Atlantic salmon and they're putting them into the creeks uh, in the spring and hopefully reintroduce them to Lake Ontario. Cool. ID feature, speckles on the cheek. All right. They do change color uh, through, uh, through uh, spawning. Okay. Chinook salmon, which is actually also known as the king salmon uh because it's a big it's a big fish and uh so the big feature about this guy no speckles on the cheek but he's got black gums inside of his mouth is black okay the other salmon does not have that so there's the king what else do i have to know about the king yeah oh well, yeah he dies when he when he uh spawns um oh he's got a white belly yeah uh suppose he had blue greenish back black top on, on it and yeah, okay. I just know the black gums. And, do, 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 do. and it was reintroduced to, to uh, Lake Ontario, like I said. Color tra transformation in the fall, okay. It's a male. He actually gains that when he's spawning, turns, turns that color, and then dies. So the black gums, good photo of the black gums. Really good photo, that's a female, black gums. Or is, wait a minute, that's a female or a male before it breeds. So I can't say it's a female. Well, the person holding it is female. I can say that, can't I? I think I can. Coho salmon. 
more linear, uh, not as robust as the king salmon. But you're like, okay, I get the king salmon. It doesn't look like that at all. But gosh, you know, Kevin, that looks like the Atlantic salmon. Uh, well, um, it has no speckles on the cheek. Look at that. No speckles. It's got some speckles on the top, but no speckles on the cheek. Big difference, okay? And it's from the Pacific Ocean, too. Um, and a hook nose. It does have a hook nose. All right. Those are your salmon. Hoping to get you confused. There they are, turning, uh, going from ocean to freshwater coloration. Male and female from ocean to spawning, fresh water. Lake sturgeon, cool. These guys are old fish. Their bones are not normal, like, nor, like normal hollow bone of, no. Oh. <laughs> Lake sturgeon, uh, love these guys. They are really old mystical fish. Uh, they've been around for a long, long time. Their bone structure is cartilage, meaning it's like a, our skull, and all other fish have hollow bones. So totally different. In fact, if you find, which I have twice actually found, as the skull of one, it is so cool to see the skull of the sturgeon. Uh, all right, they um, they got these barbels here, and they put, basically they use this snouty nose to push up the dirt on the bottom of, of the, the lake to get food, and they use the, these as sensory things to find the food, okay? Look at that structure on it. So they can go to, was it, um, gosh, what's a, uh, 200 pounds, really? 200 pounds, six feet or two meters. I do know they can go well over a hundred years and years old and they don't reach maturity until their third um, uh, decade. So, wow. They, uh, yeah, we really need to protect these guys. They're really finicky fish too. Really good indicators, meaning if something's happening with them, we're doing something wrong. Okay, we're going to talk about sunfish. And here's the whole thing where we now are graduating into, we're progressing with all the, this ID stuff. No longer are you going to call sunfish sunfish because there's a whole bunch of different sunfish, okay? You're no longer going to say seagull. There's no such thing as a seagull. It's a herring gull, ringbill gull. We're progressing, okay? You, we're not using these slang terms anymore. So sunfish. Here's the, don't, don't oh, put them in yet. Pretty. So here's the difference between. So that's a bluegill and then that's a pumpkin seed. And then that is a pumpkin seed. You can see the difference. <laughs> so there's no true sunfish then. They're, they're just different they're two, types. They're two different kinds. There's actually largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, rock bass, bluegill, and pumpkin seed are all pieces of sunfish. But, but bass are in the sunfish family? Yep. So if I catch a, a sunfish, I can say, look, I got a bass? No. A bass is a sunfish, but like a bluegill isn't a bass. So largemouth and smallmouth are both members of the sunfish family, but that's like a sub, uh, I don't want to say species, but it's, a, it's like a sort of a contingent for them. But it'd be embarrassing if I had a sunfish boat. A bass yes. boat would be better, right? Exactly. But, but if in a bass boat I catch sunfish. It's technically a sunfish boat. Bluegill? Oh, that's supposed to be a G. I moved the slide up. And bluegill. And why they're called bluegill? They've got a blue fleck on the gill plate. Really hard to see it there. There it is right there. And it's got black markings on its back dorsal. And uh, I think this is called the bicular flap. The bicular, bicular, something like that. Orange is bottom. If you look at the next one, pumpkin seed doesn't have blue, it has red. Okay, that's the difference. Pumpkin seed are called pumpkin seed because they're more elongated than actually the bluegill, their body, so therefore it's supposed to look like a pumpkin seed. I don't see that. <laughs> it's got also um, those uh, white lines uh, on their gill plate as well, really prominent. But see also on their back dorsal, no black blotches or marks like the bluegill, okay? Pumpkin seed are usually a little smaller than, than bluegill as well, All right? So not a sunfish, it's either pumpkin seed or bluegill but they're in the sunfish family, so you can say that. Rock bass, I'm pretty sure these guys are introduced. I don't know the history of them, but I do know that in some lakes you can catch a bunch of them, really bony, you wouldn't want to eat them. But uh, they're, not a, they're not a sunfish, okay? They have really prominent spiny rays on them. They have a red eye, really prominent red eye, which is a bad diagram, but they, and they just have this blotchy look to them. They're not as big as a bass bass, uh, but they're bigger than a sunfish. Crappy. Well, okay. So there's a whole bunch of things to talk about the, black, the crappy and how to identify it. Um, uh, first of all, I have to look at my notes because I forget the, the difference between that, the black crappy and the white crappy. Oh boy. 
Yes, that's right. Um, on the dorsal fin, there is seven to eight spines. On the white crappie, they have six. Okay. Really hard to go through coloration because they change color in different environments, like a chameleon. And um, yeah, so all right, also has six to seven anal fin spines as well. But you know it's a crappie, not a sunfish. So here's the thing: like, how, what's the difference between a, a crappie and a sunfish, or sorry, bluegill or a pumpkin seed? Almost broke my own rule. The hump on the back, okay? It's got a hump on the back, and that's why people like eating these and catching these more than sunfish because it's got more meat to it. Okay, really tasty too. Here's a black crappie. So see the coloration. What will happen in a different environment? Look at that. Cool. Walleye. All right. I'm going to have a sip of tea before I explain, start explaining this because some people are going to get very upset with me. Especially people living in the north. Okay, a walleye is a walleye. It is not a pickerel. Sorry, sorry. Start yelling if you want. I'll wait for a bit. Okay. A lot of people in the north call them pickerel and they think the wa walleye term is American term. It is not. Don't blame them. Okay. Now, what if I catch a walleye and I'm in a boat that's called a pickerel boat? Completely different. So pickerel are a species of pike. We have some northern pickerel and some chain pickerel in like uh, the St. Clair or some of the St. Lawrence, but they're completely different species altogether. If walleye look absolutely nothing alike, they're sort of closer really, closer related to perch. And oh, do you have one? Nope. They're closer related to perch and they uh, have two completely separate, a spiny end, a soft dorsal fin, whereas the pickle just have the soft dorsal fin, uh, which is like a key trademark of the, well, it's a key uh, part of the pike family. If I go up to Northwestern Ontario, everyone's got to call their walleye pickle. Yeah. It's, why? Does, I don't know. It's a mystery to me. It's like calling a carp a sturgeon. It's not even com comparable. Tomato, tomato? Nope. It's even, even further than that. Like it's. It's completely different. <laughs> oh, you got a fish there. We got to get him back in the water. Oh, look at that. Can you put him back for me? You can call them pickerel if you want. I go up north and I still call them pickerel because if I don't, if I don't some local is going to beat me up. <laughs> but when you're in fish and wildlife, they're walleye. You can't use the slang term pickerel. Sorry. Okay. Fight amongst yourselves. But it's a walleye. It's not a pickerel. Pickerel is a pike name. And that's not a pike. All right, two separate dorsal fins. Uh, it's got a, um, a white blotch on its anal fin and a white blotch on its caudal fin. That, this one is more prominent than the anal fin. You see that right there, the white blotch. But the big prominent thing is the big eye, walleye. They're very nocturnal. Uh, they go in schools, so if you catch one, you'll catch more than, uh, more than one because of the perch family, perch go in schools as well. And really, really razor sharp teeth. Very predaceous fish, okay? Tubular shaped like a submarine as well. And tasty, tasty, tasty. Let's just say, Andy, I caught your walleye. Mm. Caught your walleye. I want walleye. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good dinner for all four of us. Uh, we're starving actually, it was a long day. We eat again. <laughs> Yellow perch. Oh, sorry. Um, it's got six to eight vertical, uh, black blotches uh, or lines along it. Uh, it's about this big. It's not as big as the walleye, but, but yeah. And you catch a lot of them and they're very, very, very tasty. Uh, usually reddish bottom to it as well. And now <laughs> the textbook says they're in the walleye family. And then they say that the walleye are in the perch family, whatever, they're, they're in the same family as walleye and perch, whatever, blah, 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 blah. All right, bass. Oh yeah, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. All right, the textbook says this thing, and, and um, I always teach this, and I told, tell everybody like you're never gonna see it. The, the largemouth bass is called largemouth because the mouth goes past the eye. Okay, so there's the smallmouth. See that? There's largemouth. There's a lot easier ways to identify them than that. Okay, <laughs> the main thing to identify them is this this bar along here. Okay. When you see the smallmouth bass, totally different. So um, the, they have black, what, what would be a horizontal line along, along the back. And also it's the habitat. They, uh, black, uh, black bass, well, the, there's, there is a, a other name for them called black bass, whatever, but anyway, largemouth bass. Um, 
like warmer water than the smallmouth bass. They are in more weedy areas, uh, more shallow water. That's a big bass. They also go, go bigger than smallmouth. They don't fight as well. I should say fight as well. They don't jump as much. When you catch a smallmouth bass, it jumps everywhere. Largemouth bass usually just hunkers down. That's the habitat of a largemouth bass. Very shallow water, very weedy. That is a huge largemouth bass. And uh, <laughs> this is the fish. I'm not sure if you watched any of my other videos, but time and time, time again, I'll, I'll make fun of, uh, of um, Pine Martin. Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel, fantastic, Mar Martin Pine. Um, and uh, they, uh, he did a trip in the Naganosh area and uh, by near Island Lake, he went off to some side lake and he caught a few bass and I caught that and many more like that right in front of his campsite. That I think is one of my biggest bass I've ever caught. It's huge. Oh, look at the size of that fish! You get this on film? <laughs> Smallmouth bass are in southern Ontario, but they're also in northern Ontario. So once you get into northern Ontario, like past Algonquin, like a, a North Bay, um, Tomogamy, things like that, you're going to catch smallmouth bass, not largemouth bass. They like deeper water. They're in places where there's there's uh, lots of rocks, lots of uh, uh, down trees, and things like that. They like colder water, not like a trout, but they do like colder water more so than the uh, largemouth. But key characteristic the lines. They're, they're vertical, not horizontal. There's not one horizontal line. There's a whole bunch of vertical lines. Okay. And red eye. Okay. Mm. So, missing something here. I think there's something, I think that there's less separation between the, the two dorsal fins too, but you won't, you won't get this one wrong once you see the sides of it. And look, there's a habitat for it. Okay. Muscalunge, uh, right? Muscalunge, Ojibwe word for ugly pike. And um, they're in the Corthus uh, and other areas too, but they do not mix with pike. Well, they can't mix with pike. Pike, I think I don't, I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is how it works. Pike, um, no, musky breed before pike, so therefore the pike will eat the young of the musky. So if you get pike in the water of a musky lake, then they'll decimate the musky, okay? At the college in Stanford Fleming College in Lindsay, I'm not sure if I mentioned the college that I teach at, but it's the Stanford Fleming College in Lindsay, uh, what we used to call the Frost uh, Center. And um, yeah, we're, we're raising them in there as well uh, to be released in Lake Simcoe and other, other places. And yeah, uh, they're huge fish. They're the largest of the pike family. They are pike uh, or pike family, and, and they're the largest of it. They're monsters, absolute monsters. Okay. <laughs> the lures we're using, I've caught fish that size. I thought I'd keep them. Uh, was it, uh, they can go over to 60 pounds. Can you imagine catching a fish that's over six pounds? I, I have seen these things swallow baby ducks, uh, baby loons, like everything. Um, so what's the difference between that and a pike? Well, well, we're gonna start off with, with the, the skin first of all. This is a pike. Rectangular blotches, okay? Musky, vertical blotches, and almost like a, like a tiger, okay? So they're not any regular blotches. Also, the pike, has light blotches on a back background. So the difference? The musky has black blotches on a white background. Ah! So musky and pike are very predacious, okay? So uh, they actually want to be stationary. They don't want to be moving around so the, the, uh, the prey can see them. So how do they do that? Because again, the, all fish have to move to get uh, water through the gills to get oxygen. These guys use their uh, pectoral fins and they do this and it pushes water in their gills so they're stationary. And then, you know, the prey comes by and zip, they zip out and grab it. Cool. All right. The other thing between a muskie and a pike, uh, if you really, really are questioning whether uh, it, it's a muskie or a pike, look underneath right here and count their sensory spores. Muskie have seven or more on both sides. So seven or more, seven or more. And a pike has no more than six. So that was, that's a key I indicator uh, if you can't, figure out the difference. That is a northern pike, okay? Not very big.
He's not very big. I think I'll put him back. Even if I wanted to have him for lunch. <laughs> okay. This is a bigger fish. Ah, uh, it's another pike. <laughs> Man, I'm catching. I can... oh. <laughs> Ah, fish loose in the boat. See the blotch is right there. That's a really bad photo. Sorry, I should show you the side of it, but you know, that's a northern pike. That's caught in Booth Lake in Algonquin Park. Amazing fishing for pike. They've been um, introduced accidentally by the by someone. I don't know how they got there. And everybody goes, oh, great. It's because of fantastic uh, uh, fishing uh, for, for pike there, but they're decimating the brook trout. Okay, we, we do not want pike in Algonquin Park. So when you get to one of those dams in Gulfman Park and it says you cannot fish at the dam, that's why you can't fish. They don't want you to accidentally catch a pike and then put it into lakes like Obion and stuff like that. It wouldn't be good, all right? Same thing as not, you don't want a pike in, in the courses, okay? We want muskie, we don't want pike. There's a few more here. Catfish, uh, this is the channel catfish. This is the more southern Ontario species of catfish. They are in more fresher water, more uh, rivers. Um, and they have uh, speckles on them and a really forked tail. And they got the barbels, the sensory barbels. A lot of people think when they catch them or they don't want to catch them because they think they're going to get stung by these. That's not what stings you at all. It's this thing. It's a bone, a cartilage coming out, like a spear. And when you grab the fish like this, uh, like that, you get st stuck with that thing and it really hurts. So grab it by the caudal peduncle and you'll be fine, okay? That is what's getting you, not the barbs. If you're gonna catch, catch catfish and eat them, eat them in the springtime because they're a bottom feeder. So um, a little bit, the meat's a little bit fresher, okay? Mud cat, uh, bullhead cat, sorry. I, you know, people, people call them mud cats, but uh, they're, they're the more northern species, more, more spread out. They uh, can survive in, in more muddy water, uh, more warmer water, larger barbels, um, more dots than actually, uh, or more blotches than, than dots but the tail, it's not forked at all. So the big difference, okay? Last one, Lake Whitefish. So this is salmonoid. This is a, it's in the salmon family. There's the adipose fin right there. Very prominent uh, scales and uh, also sucker-like mouth, not right to the bottom, but sucker-like mouth, little snouty nose and really good eating. They, they go in schools, they don't go too big, but I, I would say to eat them, you have to eat them fresh. I find if you actually catch them and then put them in the freezer, they get freezer burn really, really quickly. So, all right, we got that. Oh, the fork tail, they got a fork tail. All right, I think, I think, oh, that's it. All right, get ready for the test. Get ready for the test. Okay, okay, are you ready? You got something to write with or your laptop or your phone, whatever. It's gonna be tough. There's 20 of them, lots of species this time. Now, if you're an avid angler, this is probably a really easy test for you. If you're not, well, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. All right. Number one. Hmm. And some people have been saying that I am giving away too many hints on these tests, and that's what I do. I'd rather people feel confident about themselves and feel that they're doing well as opposed to stress them all out. Um, uh, and yeah, that's the, what I do. Um, I actually find that when you first start IDing species, it's just more mem memor memorization. Um, mem mem memorization. Um, the later on, you have to do a key and key them all out, and that gets more difficult. But when you first start out, confidence is important. All right, but I will try not to do as many hints this time. He will be in a stream or a lake, though. And he's my favorite fish. Number two. Introduced species from Europe. Number three, I will say it's one of the salmon. Number four, that's also a salmon. And it's known as the king of all salmons. Number five, 
Another salmonoid. That doesn't mean that it's a salmon. It's in the salmonoid family. Okay. Number six. It's one of the salmon fish. You have to know. Number seven. This fish does not taste like crap. <laughs> Number eight. So it is one of the two bass you need to know. Look at the background behind me. Look at the habitat that I caught that fish in. That's the key. Number nine. It's either a pike or a muskie. Look at the blotches along the side. Is it light marks on a back, black background or the other? Number 10, don't get this wrong. I won't even give you a half mark if you give me the other turn. Zero. There, I've said it. Number 11. Ooh, I use that photo in the presentation. Ooh, that's Will and Caribou. That's Ann. That's uh, Bill Ostrom's wife, Ostrom Pack. She's an amazing palate. <laughs> amazing cook, too. What we do on that trip, and we would catch, oh, I almost said the name of the species. <laughs> We would catch that fish and we'd catch walleye and we put the walleye inside of that fish with onions and lemon and seasoning and then we would sew it all up and then bake it in, in, the, in the fire. <laughs> Number 12. Number 13, this is the other bass. Its habitat would be deeper water rocks, stumps, and this is the one you would find in more northern Ontario than southern Ontario. Number 14, it's either a pike or a muskie. It'll give you extra marks if you actually say the true proper term for it. Number 15, It is in the salmonoid family. Number 16, one of the two catfish you need to know. Number 17, the other catfish you have to know. Number 18, it's in the walleye family. Number 19, this is one of the other salmon you needed to know. Look here and look in its mouth. That will help you. The last one. That's a Gonquin Park. It's actually Roseberry Lake. Uh, look at its tail. It's not the greatest photo looking on the side of it, but look at its tail. All right, count them all up and let's go over them. Okay, you ready? All right. Number one, brook trout or speckled trout, I accept both. Number two, brown trout. Number three, Atlantic salmon, speckles on the cheek, okay, and the back. Number four, King salmon, Chinook salmon, okay? Number five, rainbow trout. Number six, pumpkin seed. Number seven, black crappie. Number eight, largemouth bass. Number nine, northern pike.
You should call it Northern Pike. This was more than just Northern Pike. Number 10, walleye, not a pickerel. Number 11, lake trout. See the fork in his tail? That's a giveaway. 12, lake sturgeon. 13, smallmouth bass. 14, musky or muscalunge. Give yourself a bonus if you call it muscalunge. 15, whitefish. 16, channel cat, channel catfish. 17, bullhead catfish or mud cat, if, you, if that's what you call them. 18, yellow perch or perch, it should be called yellow perch. Number 19, that is a coho salmon. No black gum, no speckles on the cheek, okay? And 20 is lake trout. I threw it in there just, just to make sure. And also I wanted to show off my lake trout. Okay, add them all up, let me know how you do. Blah, blah, let, me how you, let me know how you did on that. <laughs> and I think I'm going for a, a nice little walk. In fact, I can see everybody walking out there. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll walk later. All right, bye. I caught a lake trout for lunch. What about that? Just put my line in the water. Got a fish. <laughs> Haggard Lake. I think there's fish in Haggard Lake. Uh, Mr. Baxter, what's going on at this point? You are in the process of catching me dinner. <laughs> I want a walleye. Mr. Baxter's all whiny because he, he didn't catch a walleye to eat. He, he doesn't want a lake trout. He's lake trout not as good as walleye. I'll have it all myself then. <laughs> There's a rumbly in my tumbly for walleye!